pleased to have at the table Daniel Trust. You have such a story to tell, and we're going to start telling it here tonight. A Rwandan genocide survivor, a motivational speaker, a philanthropist. All an amazing story. Daniel, how did you get to Connecticut from Rwanda, and what happened there that brought you here? Yeah, again, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, and uh, I uh, came, I was born and raised in Rwanda, and I came to Connecticut as a refugee in 2005 when I was 15. And uh, I've been here since uh, then, but before I came, I, I went through uh, so much in my home country. When I was five years old, there's a terrible war that happened in, my, uh, in Rwanda and I lost uh, my dad, mom, and two sisters. And uh, uh, this event, you know, this event uh, left me as an orphan and um, I lost everything. I lost my parents, uh, our house that we had got burned. So my, from the time I was five to the time I was 10, I went through so much, but Do yeah. you know, you saw yeah. the, the genocide, um, some 800,000 people lost, yes. two tribes warring. Yes. You saw people murdered in front of you, yes? Yes, yes, my mom, my mom, yeah. How did you get past that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a miracle. I would say it's a miracle that happened because at that time there were many children like myself who were being killed as well. So when my mom was being beaten to death, I, uh, I was saved by one of the guys that was uh, there and uh, he took me to his house, his house and he hid me. He hid me for a couple of days until he put me on a truck to go to a nearby country for refuge. You're five years old, you're yes. taken away, you've seen your mom killed. You're taken away by somebody else who saved you. Yes. But that was not a good situation either. No, no. Tell me about that. No, it wasn't because once I went to a nearby country, uh, the Congo, where we, went to re where we went as refugees, we had nowhere to go. We were in camps and then eventually I reunited with my family. And uh, life wasn't easy afterwards. And uh, I constantly was beaten, abused, and both physically and emotionally. And life was just tough for a young person like myself who had just witnessed uh, losing my mom. Yeah. Did you ever get any help with that? I mean, how did you go forward? You have brothers and sisters that yes. did survive. Yes. Uh, two sisters in this country, yeah. a brother still in Rwanda. Yes. Did you ever get any help? I mean, once you landed here, your sister came first. She got here somehow from Rwanda. Yes. Who, brought, who brought her here? Yes, so she came as a refugee and an organization in Bridgeport uh, called the International Institute of Connecticut. They help refugees and immigrants immigrant to the United States when they are going away from their countries because of different situations that are going on. So that organization helped my, series, my sister settle in Bridgeport. And once my sister settled in Bridgeport, I joined with uh, uh, Vega on uh, in 2005. And uh, uh, the journey was not easy because <laughs> I came without knowing how to speak English. And I was a kid in a new country. I didn't know anyone. Um, but uh, through the support of my teachers at Basic High School, I went to Basic High School And in you Bridgeport. learned English quickly. Yes, very quickly. And you became an honor student. Yes. And you went to, to Southern. Southern Connecticut, yes. And right. then you have been giving back ever since you got to this country. And yes. tell me how you're doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So I started uh, the Daniel Trust Foundation when I was a freshman at Southern Connecticut the State Daniel University. The Daniel Trust Foundation, and yes. what does it do? Yeah, the mission of the Daniel Trust Foundation is to give uh, back to students who are from low-income communities with their education. We support them with their education and career needs. And we also honor the teachers who go above and beyond to help the students succeed in school and in their personal lives. Did Basic High School in Bridgeport, did Southern help you in all these ways to, to guide you? Absolutely, absolutely. Was you there know. one person that, that grabbed you and, and held on to you and, and, and showed you the way? Yes, there were many people that played a role into making me who I am today, but one of my teachers in high school, Kathy Silver, whom I named uh, our teacher recognition program after, she is a wonderful woman, an arts teacher at the time, 
who welcomed all students in, in her classroom and she would show us so much love because many of the kids that go to this school come from different places. They've experienced so many traumas and uh, so she showed us a lot of love and not only me. Uh, she would take us on trips in New York. She would uh, invite us to her house on Thanksgiving. She would cook for us, take us on horse riding. So she, she made an impact. And when I started the Dini Trust Foundation, she was the first person who said, I will do anything to support you and make sure that you get where you need to be. So she bought all my t-shirts that I sold at Southern at the time. Uh, she would uh, sponsor my trips that I would take to go to Haiti. Uh, and uh, so she supported me and she's one of the reasons why I'm where I am today. Yeah. You've been back to Rwanda. I've, I went there last year. And why? Uh, my older brother, who uh, raised me after my uh, parents passed away, he passed away last last year. So I went to his funeral, and I got to reconnect with his family and family that I hadn't seen in 14 years. What did you think when you were back there? <sighs> what did I think? I. Um, I wasn't sure what to think when I was there because I'm just imagining you yeah. on the plane going back there. Yeah. Um, fear would be inside of me. Yes, I, I, um, I was a little bit scared because I didn't know what to expect because I only had negative um, uh, images of Rwanda, and I, when I left, I was I just wanted to get out of there and just go somewhere where I can have peace and go to school and be around people who loved me. So going back was very tough for me, but uh, it, it also healed me because I made peace with some of the people who had done me wrong in the past, and. Uh, uh, so forgiveness is a huge thing for me. That's why I'm here today, because I've been able to do a lot of forgiving. <laughs> what is it in you that can do that? Why can you forgive? Uh, it's, uh, for I think, all the atrocities that you've seen, yeah. how, what is in you that gives you the strength? I think it's a gift from God. It's a gift uh, that uh, I was born with, I think, because uh, it's not easy to go through what I went through and be able to let go so easily. Uh, I'm naturally, I'm able to forgive and uh, let things go naturally. I will be upset about something today and then tomorrow I'll let it go. So that has been uh, uh, something that I was blessed with. People have told yeah. you you're remarkable. Many times, I'm sure. <laughs> You'll be shy about that. You're 26 years old. Yes. You, you have a foundation. Yes. You're a motivational speaker. Yes. You love to go to high schools and yes. colleges and tell your stories. Yes. Why do you do that? What is it that you're trying to do? Yeah, I am trying to let people know, and young people, and uh, uh, mature people as well, I just want to let them know that regardless of what you go through in life, it's going to be okay. You know, if I can, you know, witness my mom, mom being killed, lose somebody that I loved dearly, and, you know, have my house get burned and I lose everything, eventually make my way here as a refugee without knowing how to speak English. Work so hard to learn how to speak English, put myself through college, graduate and, uh, you know, become a bank manager when I was 24 years old and buy my house, my first house when I was 24 years old. Imagine what kids who live here in America, who are born, imagine what they can do. You know, so if a young person like myself who had nothing, if I'm able to rise and do so much, and I think our young people in America have so much potential because we have so many resources here in the States, and uh, I think our young people just deserve better and they could do so much more. So I tell my story to inspire them, to show them that, you know, this is, the, you know, the American dream is, is still alive. Uh, and they just gotta dream, they gotta have goals, and no matter what they go through, you, you just can't give up. If you fall down, you get up. Uh, you know, because we do so many things, uh, and not everything is um, uh, successful. You know, we have failures here and there, but no matter what, you always wanna get your head up and keep on going. Daniel, what yeah. does America mean to you? Wow. <laughs> America, wow, that's a good question. This is, uh, this country has opened so many doors for me and uh, it's also opened a lot of doors for so many people that came before me. Uh, America is home. America is home, yeah. America is home, it's, it's a, you know, we have so much, I know we have so many problems that 
go on. But in the scheme of things. Yes. But uh, we are so blessed in this country. We are so blessed. Daniel, you're 26, as we've just established. Yes. Let's say in 10 years. Yes. Where are you? What are you doing? What's the dream? Because it What's seems the like there are probably many dreams that you yes. have. Yes. Uh, ten years from now, wow, I would love for the Dana Trust Foundation to have a bigger impact in ten years. Uh, the work that I'm doing for young people and right orphans. now. Uh, right now we have um, 15 students whom I'm sending to college. And uh, some of them are attending some of the top schools in the country. You know, one of our scholars is going to Harvard University. The other one is going to- What does that mean to you, that you're sending a child to Harvard? It's, um, it's paying it forward. You know, it's paying it forward. Um, again, I'm sitting here chatting with you because many people helped me get here. And it's my duty to make sure that I pay it forward. So for a young uh, girl like Sapmana, whose parents uh, divorced when she was very young, her mom is a school bus driver, and despite all the challenges she had faced growing up, with living uh, where her father ad abandoned the family, and eventually her mom forced her to study hard and said, you have to be number one. And, you have, you, and she believed in herself that she was going to go to Harvard. And she made it happen. And her dream is coming through. Uh, and I can only imagine what this young girl is going to accomplish. And, uh, and I want you know, to witness so millions of kids who come from challenging backgrounds make it. How yeah. can people help you? Uh, people can help us by uh, in our, our website on uh, DanielTrustFoundation.org. They could support the foundation. Uh, we're involved on, uh, we're very active on social media. They can follow us on social media. I've been following you, <laughs> <laughs> which is just awesome. And uh, also, I, I give a lot of uh, speeches at colleges and high schools. Uh, Im invite me on uh, at your school, at your college. I will make sure that I inspire your audience. You will go home inspired and you won't see your, you, you will think of your life differently. Uh, so people can support us in so many ways. Invite me to speak to your school. They can go on my website, danielTrust.com, and uh, uh, there's so many ways to support. <laughs> well, Daniel Trust, you are an amazing yeah. individual. And yes, colleges and high schools should yeah. invite you to tell their stories because people will leave feeling really good. Daniel Trust, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time you took to sit down with me. I think you're an amazing person. I think you do inspire a lot of people as well. I've watched you for a very long time with everything that you do, and you're an inspiration as well. So you inspire so many women uh, who uh, you know, want to be entrepreneurs, and uh, I think you're just a great person. So well, thank right you. Right back at you. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find the piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of my mind. Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you 